Train to Busan, The Kingdom, Sweet Home, Parasite. Now we got Squid Game. South Korea is doing to Hollywood what manga is doing to comics. And that's a good thing. I always wanted to say that. But in all seriousness, it's a really excellent TV show. I obviously loved watching it, and I suggest people, if they have the opportunity to watch it as well, it's one of the biggest debut hit uh, from Netflix, 111 million viewers worldwide. It's actually a very good and compelling story. It focuses on a couple of rich people who are bored, and in order to entertain themselves, organize some death games, and they bet on the various players within those death games. While the players themselves eventually know that there are death games, but they are being taken from some of the most desperate and the most impoverished people in the country who are usually surrounded by debt, who don't feel like living anymore, who have nothing left to lose. And this is what I like about the story, because no sane individual would want to partake into this situation. I mean, the RNG, the random luck involved into winning these games is astonishing. And the only reason that the players keep going is because of literally just that. Outside, they have nothing left to lose. So they try to win the big prize in order to gain a chance at changing their life around. So let's analyze a little bit what's happening in these games. And if you were one of these competitors... How could you get out of it? Now, obviously, if you were one of these competitors, you would probably find yourself in a lot of debt. Maybe you have a family or a relative that's very sick and you can't take care of them anymore. So you're so desperate, you're actually willing to try. You're approached by a man who proposes a very interesting game to you that if you win, you gain $100. And if you lose, he's going to give you a slap. Now, as an Eastern European, I'm already very suspicious of strangers approaching me on the street. So I would most likely survive the Squid Games by not even knowing about their existence. I would just refuse to communicate or to talk with that person. And if they keep interacting with me, I would just walk away. But in this case, the player decides to keep talking. And you notice right away what is going on and what the scam is. You see, the two players might seem like they're playing a game of skill, but in reality, the two players are not equal at all. Clearly, the man in the suit had a lot of time to practice at this game and perfect it, which is why he is the one getting to choose what the game is. Meanwhile, from the perspective of the player, he feels that he can gain $100 without risking anything. And he gets accustomed to the idea that if he doesn't win at the game, he is going to be punished. And he allows someone to assault him by giving him a repeated slaps on the face in the perspective of winning the money. So already you're getting the players used to the idea that it's okay if someone harms their body. It's okay if someone commits a crime against them, that of assault, if they have a chance at winning money. So after they win the money, obviously, they notice that they can actually subject themselves to physical torture in order to obtain even more. So this is when the players are going to try to phone the number that was provided to them in order to play in these games. Now, this is the part that becomes very interesting. So they're told to go to an unspecific location and they're being abducted and gassed, taken away to some weird compound that they have no idea where they are. And it's at this point where, in reality, I think most people would just stop cooperating. Simply because if you've been kidnapped and taken to an undisclosed location, you don't even know if the people there are going to go on their promise, if they're actually going to give you their money if you manage to do what they tell you. So this is uh, already enough to raise a lot of alarm bells. But apparently, the organizers allow the people there to sign a contract. Now, the contract states that the games will end if the majority of people agree with it, that a person cannot leave once the game starts, and whatever else it says, it doesn't really matter, because yet again, it's the same problem. It's the people in charge that are the same people that get to enforce the contract. In other words, all this does is another psychological attempt 
to create that there is fairness in the games, that there is some rules that are going to be enforced. But having just been kidnapped from your family and not knowing where you are, doesn't really mean that you should trust these people. In fact, the opposite is true. So it's really at this point that you should just stop cooperating and try to talk with other people to do the same. Because even if you manage to win, as I mentioned before, there is absolutely no guarantee that they're actually going to give you the prize. Still, the people just play along, and I guess it's due to the herd mentality, where if uh, a lot of individuals do something, the rest will follow. And the first game commences. Now, the first game is green light, red light, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have probably played it when you were kids. And the idea is that one person is putting their face against a tree, saying a childhood rhyme, and then turning around, and any person that they can see has moved, is being eliminated. And in this case, the people eliminated actually get shot. Now, on the surface, this looks like it's a very skill-based game. And it should be quite simple. You just run and you stop. And if you know how to do it properly, if you don't run too fast so that when you stop, you don't lose momentum, but you don't also run too slow so that you run out of time, it should be a game that's easy to master, right? Well, it turns out there's a lot more luck involved. The first problem with this situation is that the people there don't know that someone is going to get shot. So many people will react to this in different ways. When someone hears a gunshot, they may initially just try to run, which makes you move, which makes you be designated to be shot as well. And because this is a closed compound with no exits, you're eventually going to get killed no matter what. So it's really lock-based. If you're the type of person that just freezes and doesn't move when you hear a gunshot, you might actually have enough chance to figure out what's going on and realize that by playing and winning the game, you're going to be safe. So all of a sudden, you notice that there's a lot more luck involved than initially it would appear. But secondly, even if you manage to just want to play the game, the people who are going to run from the front towards the back might hit you on the way out. And when they hit you, you're going to move. And because of that, you can also get targeted for elimination. So yet again, a lot of luck. Even if you play the game properly, someone can just bump into you and you can end up getting killed. Now, the most uh, lucky contenders would be the ones sitting more to the sides without any people in front of them as well as the ones that manage to freeze when they hear the gunshots instead of trying to run for the exit. So having survived the game, the competitors fail to notice something that I'm pretty sure a lot of people pointed out in comments, that all of these games are being drawn on the wall. And by knowing what games you're going to play next, it's going to give you an unfair advantage in order to strategize and plan on how you're going to win them. And this is something that I'm really surprised the uh, characters in the show never pointed out. But I guess maybe it's because the walls were covered with the bed bunks first, as well as the fact that they were very scared and traumatized what they were seeing. Now, in the show, obviously they stop the game and they all go back home but they realize that really they have nothing to lose. And what's interesting is that because the first game was a lot more skill-based than the next games, many of the players might think that if they manage to have a good strategy, if they manage to be in control, they might actually win. Again, take into account that the organizers of the game never mentioned that only one person gets to win and, and the game seemed to be designed in a way that they favor only two players remaining towards the end. So considering that there's over 500 people playing and there's only one winner, only someone that truly has a death wish would decide to participate in this. You would have much better chances at winning the lottery simply because you know for sure that the lottery will pay you the money, but you have absolutely no guarantee that these mysterious people who are obviously criminals and they are willing to murder others in cold blood, will actually go on with it and give you the big reward if you have one. 
And then you also have to think how you're going to do with the taxes because you, you're going to have to justify winning so much money on the black market, which is something that the movie doesn't actually cover. But okay, you know, fine. Let's assume that someone is that desperate and, and really that naive that they go on and they want to take another crack at the games. And also take into account that you're going to have to live with yourself knowing that you're promoting this type of criminal behavior where other people are going to get killed if they fail to win at the games. But anyway, um, let's assume that the player does want to go forward and let's look at what the next game is. The next game seems to be the Honeycomb game. Now, from my understanding, this is actually a lot more difficult than it initially seems because the material that the, the cookies are made of is very unpredictable. It can crack either way. So it looks as if it's skill-based, but yet again, there's a lot of luck involved. Obviously, a big factor lies in what shape you have chosen. Um, in the show, the triangle is considered to be one of the easier shapes. But I personally think the star is a lot easier just because it's bigger and there's a lot less to crack towards the edges. And the umbrella being the most difficult. So your fate is pretty much decided the moment you go and you choose which symbol to take. Secondly, there already seems to be a couple of answers on how to get past this uh, very interesting test. One of the players managed to smuggle a lighter, so they heat up the needle and they use the fire of the needle in order to burn through the cookie and, and they have a very easy time in pulling the correct shape out. However, again, this is just to add drama in the TV show. I don't think that's realistically possible considering that everyone had the guard attached to them just waiting to see that you crack the cookie incorrectly so that they can shoot you. So I don't really see how that person managed to uh, not notice the guard. But again, it's a lot more luck-based than you think because as you're focusing and you're trying to uh, get that cookie out, all of a sudden a gunshot can happen right next to you. And anyone that's been near firearms know how loud and deafening they are. So you could flinch and all of a sudden your cookie could be gone and you're the next guy getting shot. The only solution is the one that the uh, actual hero in the movie uses by licking the backside of the cookie. He had an easier time softening it up and pulling the umbrella out perfectly. So yes, I mean, the, the movie does after the right solution. I guess another way to do it would be to use the can that the cookie is provided in, start spitting a lot in the can until you have a lot of saliva in there and then you can just soak the cookie in and I think uh, you can do that a little bit more faster. Now, the third game is actually the one that's more interesting. This is uh, the tug of rope game and yet again, it's really based on managing to find the right team. Now, some of the characters in the TV show actually state that they would rather pair with men than women because most men are better than women at most games. So anything that requires physical contact, anything that requires brute strength, you'd rather have a tough guy next to you than an old man or a woman. And this is pretty much what most of the teams do. They try to find the, the stronger men in order to get an advantage over the others. And Again, if you looked at the drawings, you'd actually know that this game will take place. And being in the strongest team will give you an advantage. Now, you can say that, well, in the TV show, strategy played a part and some people might have some knowledge. You don't really have the time to prepare. Then again, everyone is afraid for their life. Like everyone knows that not only are they going to die, but they, they can risk a very painful and traumatic death if they fail. Now... In the show, in order to make it more dramatic and more interesting, the, you, you have the weenie team, like the team that doesn't really stand a chance at winning because they have an old man and they have several women in there. And they use various strategies. So if, if you really have the time to think and you really have the time to strategize, considering the fact that this is not an official tournament and they don't really have any official rules, you can actually cheat. So one of the best ways that you could cheat would be to just have the guy 
in the back, tie the rope to one of the ledges and make sure that the other team doesn't see it. And then there is literally no way for the other team to win. In fact, if the other team does the same, it would be a stalemate. And I assume that at this point, it would be the organizers that would not allow this tactic being used. But another thing would be for the guy in the back to just jump off the ledge. Jump off the ledge either to the left or the right and get the gravity with him pulling him down to, to actually stop the other team from pulling your teammates further. Now, the moment that the other team is being pushed down, and the guillotine falls, then the other teammates can help you go back up because you're still attached to a rope. So that would be another way you can cheat. Finally, this is an official sport event, so if you actually have anyone that watches at the Olympics, the tug of war, you can know what is not allowed to do in that sporting event, like what the rules don't allow you to do. And I'm not really sure, but I know there, there must be a couple of things that you're not supposed to do. And by doing those, by cheating you might actually pass because, again, this is not an official or sanctioned Olympic event. They don't use those exact rules. And because of that, you can get a lot of unfair advantages just by knowing. So this is one of the only games that doesn't feature a lot of luck, and it's entirely based on strategy. I suppose the only luck-based is if you're able to come up with a good team before the game. So if you're a really strong guy, you might be selected to join another team with strong men so so you're going to have this unfair advantage but if you happen to be a woman if you happen to be old if you happen not to be in shape then you're very likely to end up in a weenie team that's going to end up uh, being eliminated now this is technically not a game but it's still part of the competition during the night a lot of players are going to be encouraged to off each other because they don't have they didn't provide them with enough food so people get more angry more violent as well as the fact that they notice that if they kill another player the pot the for the, the final price goes up so it's pretty much like a prison riot and the way to survive this is twofold either you get to join a very aggressive team some of the most uh, imposing more, more of the muscular guys someone that uh, did very well in the previous competition or if you can't you should get yourself two weapons preferably if you can get your hands on two bottles and break them so that they're sharp place your back against the wall preferably a corner although you might find other people in the corner so just avoid the corner and try to place your back against the wall and then you defend yourself from whatever comes from the front now, because you're back against the wall, you can't be surprised. There can't be people behind you. But again, the, the most important thing is to try to find at least a couple of other guys that you can cooperate with. And also make sure that you don't have people using something that's longer than a bottle coming towards you. And if that's the case, then you need to get out of there. The, the important thing is to position yourself away from the light and into the dark you want the light to be in front of you so you can see what's coming if you position yourself close to the light then other people can see you and that's not a good thing all right let's talk about the next game which uh, is also very interesting because no one in the show actually thought about this so the next game asks people to go in teams of two now What's interesting is that they didn't have an odd number, so one person would be left out. And when I noticed this, I always thought, it's like, okay, the person that gets left out is probably going to not be punished simply because the organizers want to keep an appearance of fairness and the rules say that they will shoot you only if you lose a game. They don't say that if you don't manage to team up with anyone else, you're going to be eliminated. So... Considering that everything is lock-based, considering that there are, are just so many variables, I would have just risked it, and I'm telling you this like when I was watching the show, I would have just risked it and tried to be a person that doesn't have any partner, a person that doesn't get picked. Just try to stay in a corner, hopefully no one sees me, and see what happens like that. Because either way, there's a chance, there, there's a risk. So I would rather risk it like that. Now... Turns out that I would have been right, and I would have just managed to bypass the game. But for those that managed to pair with someone, and usually you would pair with a friend, given the previous game you played, this was another psychological trick. 
in order to destroy some of the strong alliances that people could have made up until this point, in order to destroy any strong friendships that people could have had. And this ends up actually destroying to um, a married couple that were in it for together trying to both to earn the prize. That didn't happen. Right? So this was actually very well planned by the people organizing the game in order to make everyone be for themselves. Just destroy all the friendship, makes them believe that nowhere is safe. They can't trust anyone because they don't know what's going to happen next. Now, the game is very interesting, and this is something that they didn't mention within the show, like no one did it, but you have 30 minutes and 10 balls, and you need to get the 10 other balls from the partner you have without resulting to violence. Now, most people just decided to play some sort of game. Uh, for example, guessing if the person has an odd or null number in their fist, and they would do this, and if they guess, they, they win a ball, so it's a fair transaction, it's not using any violence. The problem with this is that you need to think of a game that's usually going to bet it all and win it all. Because if the person just has one ball left, they might not just want to not give it to you. They, they might just flat out refuse to give you the ball. And you have absolutely no way of taking it from them, which means that both of you are going to die. Which means that if the, your partner is a dick, they may end up just not wanting to give you that last ball, might just not want to concede the win, and you're both going to end up dead. So what's important is to figure out a game where people win or lose before they know what's happening, before they have a time to think it out, before the tension rises. So, so that's, I think, the best way to do it. Now, another way to do it is what actually was done in the show, is to try to steal the opponent's balls. If you manage to steal them in any way, if the opponent trusts you because he's probably your friend, I mean, you, you chose a teammate that you probably have some faith on, if you manage to, like, hey, let's put the balls here, let's count them together, or, or anything like that, the moment you manage to take the balls into your possession, he is not allowed to attack you in any way, because violence is not allowed. So if you manage to steal them, then you have managed to win the game and you don't even have to play. So this is like the way that I, I think most people could win this if they manage to cheat or use any type of game which requires one person at one point to hold the, the entire balls in their hands. As long as that person is you, you just pick them up and you walk towards the guard and you say, hey, I have 20 balls, I, I win. And of course, you know, you can listen to the whining and nagging about fairness and whatnot as the person behind you gets shot. Now, what's interesting in the next game is that the next game is entirely based on luck. So if up until now you had a little bit of skill, the next game you're being told to pick a number between 1 and 16. And obviously most people are going to try to pick something from the middle. But there is clearly an option. So I would have personally risked it. I would have either went with 1 or 16. Like when I was seeing people picking it, I was like, okay, one is going to be very advantaged, the other is going to be very disadvantaged. So I would have just risked it. I would have probably picked one and I would have died anyway. But I'm just saying, it's a lot better to go all in at things like this than to play it safe in the middle. Now, the game is about having a bridge made out of glass with one glass that is going to sustain you, the other glass is going to break and you're going to die. So every time you take a step, you get the 50-50 option of whether you win or you die. I really don't know why the players went forward with this. I mean, when you look at this, winning the lottery, yet again, seems a lot more plausible. But it's not only that, like, this is a game about winning the lottery, and if you lose, you die. What type of per even if you're suicidal, you probably wouldn't go with this. So the correct solution would be for the players to start voting on whether or not they want to keep going with this. And I, I'm pretty sure that any person that has the the uh, the number eight and above would probably vote that they didn't want to play it. And you might even get someone from the end that is compassionate enough, someone that actually cares about other people, that they're also going to say, yeah, you know what, like, all right, all right, no. Th th this is ridiculous. 
Because it is ridiculous. Like every time you take a step, it's like flipping a coin. And with one side you die, with the other side you win. Now, I, I guess there are a couple of ways you can try to rig this game, but I don't think the competitors would allow the, the, the game owner would allow you. One way you could actually try to rig it is to just not walk on the glass at all. I mean, the bars seem quite close together, and I don't know why no one tried it, but you could try walking between the two bars, and I, I don't know if they will allow you, probably not, but I, I'm just curious like why no one has tried it. Another way that you could try it, considering the fact that they allow two people to stand on one of these glass squares, you can have one person standing there and grabbing the shirt of the person in front, allowing them to lean all the way forward in order to check the glass. Now, this actually should be within the rules that they don't say that you're not allowed to do this. And I don't think it would remove the entire RNG from the game. And I also don't know how slow it would go. But I do think that one person that's strong enough with a hand could actually check to see if the glass is safe or not. The only problem with this, obviously, is that it might be very time consuming and if the glass cracks and you injure your hand, you're going to have to just keep doing this with a bleeding hand all the way until you manage to cross the bridge. But this is still one of the best options to actually try to avoid having just complete luck based on whether you live or die. Now what's interesting is that the next game is already shaped in a triangle like people are finally being allowed to eat and it's obviously that they want one person to kill someone else so that there's only two players in the finals now i don't know how exactly they knew that there's going to only be three people up till this stage i mean especially the one with the bridge if you have someone that gets very lucky towards the end uh, or, or you just have like a couple of players that are lucky by default and they just happen to guess a lot of squares. You might have like even five or six players that win the bridge competition. But still, you have the three triangle table and everyone is offered the knife. And then you have people waiting um, during that night and uh, you, one of them kills uh, someone else. And then there's just the last two friends in order to make it dramatic. And they have to play a game of squid. Now, the game of squid is, I, I guess, like sumo wrestling. Like, you have to push the other guy out with extra rules. The only problem is that it's like sumo wrestling, but with a knife. So, you have an attacker and you have a defender. The defender, all they have to do is to push the attacker out of the ring. While the attacker gets a handicap, they, they have to jump on one foot. And if they manage to cross the middle line, then they can walk properly. And all they have to do is to reach the circle. So there's really two places that the defender wants to be in. And this is just automatically stating that you need to pick the role of defender. Just because the defender has way too many advantages. So you can either choose to stay in the middle so that the attacker has to use the disadvantage of jumping on one foot. And again, you're in the middle. You got a knife. They have to come to you. You have a lot more advantage than they do. And you can also use a jacket. You can take off your jacket, wrap it around your hand, use it like a sort of shield. And you can do that. Another thing that you can do is to actually stay in front of the circle that the attacker needs to go through. Because then you're closer to the edges. And then you can try to trip them either left or right and push them out of bounds. Finally, it's the attacker who managed to think of a very interesting strategy of picking some dirt from the ground and throwing it into the defender's eyes. And this is where he could have just won the game. He could have just ran to the circle, won the game. But again, the movie needed drama and it was a lot better and more interesting end, especially because at this point, the guy didn't really care about the blood money. Like too many people died. So he had a change of heart. He realized that the money is tainted and uh, we, we know the ending. But that was pretty much what he should have done if he wanted to win the game. He could have just throw the, the sand into the eyes of the opponent and then just run towards the circle and game is over. So all in all, yeah, don't play the squid game. Uh, winning the lottery is a lot more easy, I suppose, and uh, a lot less hazardous. 
as well as the fact that all of these games, like the overwhelming amount of them are entirely based on luck and very little based on skill. And even the ones that are based on skill, you have to focus and concentrate while gunshots are flowing around, while you know that at any second you can get shot. No, I, I just don't see why anyone would play it, unless they're really desperate and they don't know what they're getting themselves into, which is exactly what happened in this story. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.